My name is Natalie Baker from the Neurofeedback Training Company. I am a psychotherapist and neurofeedback trainer. This is a question I get a lot from people, which is how do I help myself to re-regulate when I become dysregulated? So we all talk about being stressed out and uh, not being able to sleep well and being overly reactive, um, having mental ruminations and uh, feeling hopeless and helpless. All of those extreme emotional states, including mental rumination, inability to focus, having difficulty sleeping, all of those reactions are tied to the limbic brain and specifically what we call the stress response. The brain gets habituated. So it takes little cues from the environment and says, ah, I know what this is. This loud bang sound is like that time when I was playing in the street as a child and I almost got hit by a car. I'm going back into that stress response patterning. And sometimes it's just that we have been in this habitual pattern of a stress response worrying for so long that it also then becomes part of how we self-identify. So another way that we create a habit of dysregulation is through how we think about ourselves. So if we think about ourselves as not safe in the world, as people not trustworthy, um, as gosh, we're about to lose our job any second and then we'll be homeless, right? So if we identify with this belief structure, that also then becomes the setup for that stress response to be re-triggered over and over again. How do we help the brain to come out of that stress reaction in back into regulation? So self-regulation is the ability to register that we are dysregulated, to have a toolkit of supports that help us to trigger going back into regulation, some of which is helping that limbic brain register that there is safety, and then being able to execute on those tools so that we can find self-regulation again. So then the next question becomes, well, what are the tools? What supports coming out of that dysregulated state and into regulation, neurofeedback and the role that it plays. So it's using the electrical communication of the brain to uh, register when there is um, electrical changes in the brain that, that communicate state change. And using auditory feedback, which is the brain's natural way that it's constantly checking the environment for danger, we interrupt music with neurofeedback. And that interruption in the music cues the brain to pay attention. And the brain will automatically pay attention to its surroundings because that's what the brain is designed to do. What's changed in the environment that I should know about? And so what we want it to see is we want it to see that it's in a safe environment. It's in a room where there's no danger, there's no violence. And when the brain is able to register that, it naturally will shift out of that stress, dysregulation, and into self-regulation. When we're more regulated, we just feel basically okay. There's a, maybe a sense of warmth, maybe a sense of calmness. It's much more easy for us to have empathy and compassion when we're in a state of regulation. And we can access the range of emotion. Our kids, you know, when they're more self-regulated, um, have better attention and better focus, right? We can also remember things better when we're able to be more present, right? Because we're not being distracted all the time. So I hope this was helpful for you. Please leave comments and questions um, if there's more you'd like to know.